all of us have inside of us the memory of some time way long time ago when in one of our important human relationships we were hurt or disappointed in some way. So I'd like to ask you a question now and reflect just on your own life just for a moment. When did you first learn to associate love with pain? Most of us, it's pretty unconscious, but you may, at least in your conscious mind, move back to an early romantic relationship, perhaps in your teens, or maybe when you were a child, someone who was supposed to love you, let you down, or disappointed you. Every single one of us has a common experience, no matter what culture we grew up in, no matter what gender we are. We were all at one time little and helpless in a world of big people. And we were little and helpless and dependent on these big people for our very survival. None of these big people were perfect, so every single one of us somewhere back there were let down or disappointed or frustrated at the hands of another human being. So while we all need love and want love, we're also afraid of it, at least deep in our subconscious. Perhaps we don't all own that basic ambivalence, but I want us to get used to it for a minute here. Get used to the idea that in the realm of love, we're basically ambivalent. We want it, we need it, but we're scared of those pains repeating themselves. So what I've discovered when I do the marriage counseling that I've been doing, as I said, for 40 years, is that somewhere very early in the process, usually in the dating process, although we kind of overlook some of these events in the dating process, but there's, there's a critical thing that happens. And it happens over and over. When I say critical thing, I just have a label for something that you're all familiar with. We get our buttons pushed. Now, buttons are those little sensitive areas that we wear around our heart or our solar plexus area. They're fear, they're, I can also call them fear buttons. And if somebody pushes one of my buttons, I have a reaction. So let's say my partner comes into the kitchen while I'm cooking, and he says, why are you cooking that vegetable so long? I can get a button pushed. He's trying to control me. He doesn't think I'm capable. And underneath all that, I mean, that's the initial reaction, is some kind of a push away. Underneath that is perhaps the fear that I'm not capable. See, each of these buttons comes from some fear that's way down there, usually fairly subconscious. Or I'm in a loving relationship and my partner says, I'm going to bed now, and we're, we're sitting on the couch having a good time, and he just says, I'm going to bed now, and he starts walking out of the room. I get a button pushed, because I was hoping for a longer, intimate evening together. So my button is something like, uh-oh, the, the love is starting to fade. I'm more invested in this relationship than he is, and maybe I'll start going into a pattern Okay, I better start backing away. This isn't safe. So it's really important to know what our buttons are. That is the critical work of healing our relationships so we can be more present. So obviously, buttons take us out of the present moment. You know, so my partner's walking up the stairs and I say, fine, see you tomorrow. You know, inside I'm doing this other stuff like, oh, he's not that into me and all this. Both of those things, the fine and the he's not into me thought, those I call control patterns. We've all learned protective defense mechanisms to not ever feel that hurt again. There's this, the millions of control patterns. Your whole personality is in a sense a control pattern. It's, it's, a, it's a way you coped so as not to be too, too hurt. Now, 
For some people, if you felt that feeling fully as a child, that button, like in, in my own case, one of my buttons, is rejection. So that, so that partner saying, I'm going to bed now, really can push my buttons. That's happened. Of course, there's, there's other things that can push the buttons more. But um, it will push that button of that memory of when my mom couldn't nurse me. She was having some problems with her milk coming down when I was just born. And so here I am, an infant, sucking and sucking, trying to get the nourishment that I needed, and it's hurting her. So I'm getting this energy from her that my expression of needs is not welcome. So, so many, you know, many, many of us have experiences like this that we can hardly remember. The way I remember this is through a lot of personal work, plus talking to my mom a lot about symptoms, let's just say symptoms, control patterns that I notice, like the fact that for many years, the joke with me was, I have no needs. I have no needs. You know, I had completely shut down that wanting, sucking, longing, needing part of myself. Now, it's been a long time ago that I've discovered that part, but my mom helped me a lot, piecing together that when I was that age, I got some kind of an idea that if I really, really want something and try very hard to get it, pain will be the result. So we've got, we've got two things that I want to work with you on today. Buttons and control patterns. Buttons are, the, are those reactions, the ouch, and then you go into some kind of a a semi-conscious or unconscious state, but certainly you're not present. You're seeing something that happened a long time ago, or you're maybe just afraid that something's about to happen that happened a long time ago, that you somewhere made up your mind you never want to feel again. Now, many of us, whatever that was that happened a long time ago, was very intense, and it was adaptive for you to shut it down. It helped because in, in cases where I've seen like the, where the, the mother, for example, really didn't want the child and the child picked that up, it would be way too painful for you to feel that pain fully as a little one. But in adult relationships, we get to revisit that. And I'll be talking to you about how we get to revisit that and heal that. For others of us, the pain may not have been that intense but somewhere we got the message from the world around us that if I, the little one, am in pain, then I'm somehow bad or wrong or the people around me are uncomfortable. So somewhere back there, either through our own survival mechanisms or through the learning from watching what are the rules of the game here in this life, how do I survive and get these people to like me so they don't leave me, we learned to shut down our true, full humanness, our sensitivity. And we're all trying to reclaim that sensitivity, that vulnerability, that openness to one another so that we really can love. So my promise to you today is that we're going to get a real good look at your buttons. And I'm going to have some volunteers from the audience, a couple of people at least, come up and work with me on a button pushing incident. We'll get a little bit of a look at some control patterns, but I said there are just hundreds of them. I think each of us make up new ones every day. <laughs> but control patterns are things, are things like